Donald Trump and his flirtation with dictatorship, with autocracy, continues to blossom. His relationship with it is almost, it's, it's damn near a romance. So Trump, in one of his recent rallies, has now said that if you burn a flag, you should spend one year in federal prison. I don't have to remind you that this is a man who has committed treason. This man who has committed treason believes he has the right to tell you as an American citizen, you can't burn an American flag. This is a man blinded by the privilege granted to him by his wealth, his status, and his former status as the American president. And these three things have blinded him have blinded him to consequences and to the understanding of exactly what he calls for and the the the, the mindless Trumpite goons behind him completely support his unconstitutional ramblings. And we do not need more people who want to burn our flag. I watched yesterday and the day before, they're burning our American flag. And I said, I know they say it's unconstitutional. Well, make it not unconstitutional. You burn our American flag, you should get immediately mandatory one year in jail. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. It, you're right. It is unbelievable. It's unbelievable that after you committed treason, you still have hundreds of Americans who gather around your rallies and listen to you literally sit there and say, well, let's make it not unconstitutional to legally punish people for burning the American flag. These are people who believe that their race, their religion, and their heritage makes them an American and their love for the flag. You know, flag and country and God. That somehow makes them a, an, a real American. But when it comes time to actually honor the laws in our Constitution, when it comes time to actually honor the parts of our Constitution that allows Americans to do things you don't like, now all of a sudden, you want to you want to be rid of these things in the Constitution. Now all of a sudden, you want to lock people up for burning an American flag? one year in federal prison from a man who committed treason. A man who committed treason believes himself to be the arbiter of what's unpatriotic and deserving of prison time. This is a man who just stood in front of a bunch of Americans and by simply pearl clutching about the American flag has now convinced his supporters to support an unconstitutional act. This cheap patriotism by conservative white America has to stop. Y'all have to stop. We've allowed y'all to go on with this for far too long. I'm sorry, I'm really not. You are not a patriot just because you are white, Christian, and love America. Do you love the laws that we have in place to secure freedom that you don't like? Do you love people's freedom to kneel during an, uh, during the, the national anthem? A lot of y'all don't like that freedom. You want it stripped away. While simultaneously, a lot of y'all fly Confederate flags. You somehow fondly remember a separatist nation state that tried to destroy the United States, attack us at Fort Sumter, caused the, the most deadly war in American history. You fly that flag with pride. But God forbid someone kneels during the national anthem. You get to exude the utmost amount of admiration and love for actual traitors who wrote into their articles of secession over and over. We're leaving because we believe the, 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 the new president, Abraham Lincoln, is going to endanger our right to own blacks. And these same people spoke about states' rights, even though they were trying to force northern states to send back those slaves who escaped. It's the same chaos all over again with just a lower temperature. A lower temperature. You same Confederate flag-flying people, not all conservatives, not all white conservatives, not all white conservative Christians, but... I bet all of y'all support people's right to fly that flag, and yet y'all were getting y'all's titties in a twist over Colin Kaepernick kneeling. Y'all are the ones complaining about people burning an American flag, and yet some of y'all proudly support people's right to fly Confederate flags. That Confederate States of America caused the most bloody war in American history. 
A lot of y'all fight for people's right to fly the Nazi flag, and yet somehow or another, you want to lock people up for burning the American flag. Being a patriot is not about how much you love a symbol. It's about how much you love what that symbol represents. Our flag represents something. And you have to actually love what it represents. See, you don't actually give a damn. You, Trump, and the people behind you cheering, y'all don't actually care about freedom of speech, freedom of expression. You want the, na the entire nation to be a manifestation of your own desires, preferences, wishes, and anyone else who does not fall within the confines of that, all of them be damned. That is what's going on in your head. Donald Trump is appe appealing to the lowest common denominator of just like armchair patriotism. A convicted felon who was indicted. I got indicted. You got indicted. He got indicted for committing conspiracy. He engaged in conspiracy. He's got three counts of conspiracy. I believe one count of obstruction. This is a man who committed treason. This is a man who committed treason and his only defense for himself wasn't, guys, I didn't do it. His defense was, well, I was president when I did it, so I should be immune from the consequences of it. And then the Supreme Court comes in and says, well, you know, you know, trying to get your attorney general and other members of the Justice Department to, you know, draw up false claims of fraud and send it to different states to convince them that the, the election was stolen when it wasn't. That's an official act because he's speaking to members of the Justice Department. So he can't be charged with this. You can't inquire into this. You can't use this as evidence in court. So this is a man who committed treason. His only saving grace was a corrupt and treasonous Supreme Court, and he thinks he can tell you whether you can or can't burn the American flag. This is what we're dealing with. People who don't actually love this country. They don't love the principles this country was built on. All they love is Christianity, uh, conservative values, but they don't actually love what makes America, America. They just don't. And these people have monopolized the concept of patriotism in spite of the fact that they have no respect for anything outside of their worldview. Even if it's in the Constitution. Surprise, surprise, people can burn the flag. Do I like watching people burn the flag? No. No. Do I enjoy seeing people kneel during the national anthem? No. But guess what? The moment they can't do what they want is the moment I can't do what I want to do. Am I out there burning flags? No. Am I out there kneeling during the national anthem? No. But there could come a day where maybe I might do some shit that pisses off the government. I don't know. But let's just say I said something that pissed off the state. Now, all of a sudden, I'm down bad. I'm in a bad spot. If you don't have rights, I don't have rights. That's why it's so important for us to stick together as Americans and defend one another's rights because... What happens if we get a, we just do, get rid of people's right to burn the flag? What other free speech expressions are now illegal? When is your free speech going to be next? See, these people think that their rights will be protected, but your rights will be destroyed. That's what they enjoy the most about Trump's movement. It's all about the in-group being protected by the law, but being unencumbered by the law, while the out-group being harmed by the law and restricted by the law. That is what this is all about. These people are angry individuals who have no care or concern for this nation's actual fabric of law. Zero. Now Trump goes even further in this foolishness. Trump then goes on to say that he's gonna give police officers full federal immunity to do their jobs. This is a guy who, remind you, this is a guy who summoned a mob on January 6th to obstruct the certification of the vote. This is a man, I'm just, pre I'm just, I need to preface this, in what I'm about to say with this, what he's about to say next with this. This is a man who for three hours refused to call off his supporters. For three hours, three during January 6th. He sat there for three hours and refused to say anything. He already knew they were armed. He knew they were stomping out police officers like Kirk Franklin. He knew all of that and he did nothing. So as he goes up on this stage and talks about giving cops immunity, this is a man who brought about 
who literally facilitated in the extreme amount of physical harm to cops on January 6th. We're going to give immunity to police so they can do their job. I'm giving federal immunity to police officers so they can do their job. He's going to give federal immunity to police officers so they can do their job. Like they were doing their job on January 6th, trying to stop the mob that you lied to. This is a, this guy's crazy. This is a guy who literally facilitated in the ass whooping of multiple cops. Facilitated in the death of one of his supporters, Ashley Babbitt. And he now believes himself to be the prophet of law and order. The harbinger of law and order. The man who will bring order back to this nation after he, of course, takes over as sole supreme god emperor. This guy's crazy. Federal immunity to cops? Cops already have qualified immunity. They already do. They don't need federal immunity from everything ever. This is how you create violent revolutions. This is how you create chaos. When the powers that be cannot be properly checked, this is what you end up with. This is what you end up with. You're going to give the police federal immunity so they can do their jobs? Qualified immunity is already enough. If a cop breaks the law, they need to be held accountable. They don't all of a sudden get to just get away with it because they did something illegal within the confines of official duty. If you commit a crime while you're on official duty, that is a crime, meaning you need to go to jail. Donald Trump, however, can very much empathize with committing unbelievable crimes while on duty. So I can understand why he would want a world in which cops can do whatever to whomever and McGregor walk their way out of court as if they're innocent, as if they did nothing wrong. This is the level of insanity we're dealing with. And part of me thinks that Trump and Vance aren't even trying to win. Part of me thinks that Trump and Vance aren't even worried about the election. I believe Trump and Vance are convinced that they're going to be able to contest the election in court, try to get it sent to Congress, and if that doesn't work, try to get it sent to the Supreme Court. They're going to try their best to commit a legal coup. They're going to try their best to circumvent an actual popular vote, even electoral college vote, and try their best to steal the election. They're going to try to steal the election. They are. We've already seen Trump try it before. The Supreme Court had to save him by saying, yes, Trump tried to pressure, you know, members of the Justice Department to commit fraud, but he did it while he was president. And speaking to members of the Justice Department while president is an official act. So the context in which he spoke to them really shouldn't matter in a legal, in a legal setting because it's technically an official act. This is a man who literally tr committed treason. He committed treason. Treason. This is what we're dealing with. A guy who we know tried to steal an election, was saved by a corrupt Supreme Court that basically came up with the dumbest immunity ruling I've ever seen in my life, and basically made themselves the sole arbiters of what's legal. Well, we'll decide whether what Donald Trump did was legal or not. You can't trust us. We've shown ourselves to be immensely compromised, but that's where we're at right now. We are in a situation where Donald Trump and J.D. Vance are talking in a way that's like, y'all have to know you're alienating the country. Part of me wonders if they're even trying to win. Trump is going all out on insults. He's saying unbelievably just nasty stuff. Part of me thinks Trump isn't trying to win the popular vote. He's already convinced his base to believe the, the, the vote's going to be stolen, which the only person who has ever tried to steal an election is Donald Trump. I don't know if y'all know this, but Donald Trump put together an investigative committee to find out if the 2016 election was rigged. Guess what? They found nothing. They found nothing. Just like they found nothing in 2020. Just like the bureaucrats working in the individual states that were asked to double check found nothing. I hate to break it to them. Actually, I'm happy to break this news to you, Trump supporters who might be watching me. Our elections are safe. That's a good thing. And if you're not winning them, you might need a change. 
You might need to stop trying to, you know, take women's right to abortions away. You might need to stop talking about gay marriage in a disparaging way. You might need to stop threatening to take away people's right to be free from a state mixing with religion. You need to actually look within and introspect and ask yourselves, why don't people like us? Instead of lying about stolen elections, conspiring to steal elections, and trying to commit treason. That is what you should do. Donald Trump refuses to do any of these things, so I'm going to ask you, the Republican voter, to change your mind because Trump is far gone. Don't burden yourself with what has been, in the words of Kamala Harris. Don't burden yourself with Trump and his MAGA foolishness. Mm -mm, no. Let him, when he loses in November and they try their little coup and it might possibly spiral into a, a domestic conflict, when that dust settles and Trump is defeated because evil is always defeated, don't get caught up in that. In fact, turn the tide now. Destroy Trump so badly in the polls, it's undeniable that the boy lost. Don't encumber yourself with Trump's nonsense. This man is a fraud. He's a felon. He's a seditionist traitor. All his Supreme Court appointees, they're all traitors too. Why even bother yourself with this stuff? You can be an American without being a Trump supporter. You can be a patriotic, Christ-loving, white, whatever, conservative American without, you know, guzzling Trump. This is an established fact. Trump is like, Trump is not older than America. He's not above America. But that's just the reality. Trump has gone full dictator and he he just lies all the time. He just lies. And bro, and it's crazy. It's like, this is a guy who committed treason and he's still running for president because the Supreme Court also aided and abetted in his treason. Biden better prepare for November because whatever's coming is about to be insane. It's about to be insane. Again, as I always say, regardless of your political beliefs, your political ideology, I hope you guys have an amazing day. Please vote blue in November. This wasn't on purpose, but we're going to use it for a purpose. Please vote blue in November. Okay, let's all be rid of Donald. Republicans, Democrats, let's all be rid of this foolishness. Treasonous traitor with his seditious six justices and his you know, conspiratorial Congress. Like, I'm tired of them. I'm tired of these folks. Vote blue. Get dishonest Donnie out the way. And let's have our country back. And then go back to civilized disagreements between Democrats and Republicans. If you like the video, like, comment, subscribe. Thank you.